STDs. This is a topic that a lot of dating coaches never want to talk about. People just sweep it under the rug. Or when you do want to talk about it, it's too late. You are looking up data on the CDC website, these clinical studies, and you're just freaking out. Oh, my one, one, no! Today in this video, I want to talk about the truth of STDs. I'm going to give you some clinical data, and I'm also going to compare that with my personal experience, having coached hundreds of clients one-on-one -on -one at this point, and on my own journey. I am not a medical professional. I'm just a random guy on YouTube. That said, I have coached a lot of single men and women who I have the privilege of this connection with them where they share with me their worries, their thoughts uh, on the subject. And by the end of this video, you should have a realistic view of what to watch out for and what are some of the risks, how much effort, how much worry should you be putting into all this. And I'm gonna give you some pro tips on how to avoid STDs altogether, how to get vaccinated, and how to really watch out for the things you should watch out for and not over worry about the rest of the things that don't matter. So let's talk about the curables, you know, CGS, right? Chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis, okay? Chlamydia is a bacterial infection. Gonorrhea is also a bacterial infection, as is syphilis, okay? Now, if you wanna know what the symptoms look like, you can go on Google Images. Uh, I suggest doing it while you're not eating. Well, obviously. In your yearly health test or your yearly blood test, usually uh, you can get a urine test for chlamydia. Gonorrhea also through the urine test, okay? You can request them with your health provider. And then for syphilis, it's a simple blood test, okay? They're looking for antibodies, usually from a rapid plasma test. How common are these uh, curable STDs? Well, if you look at the US population, there's about 330 million people in the US, right? So that means 1% of that is about 3.3 million people. And if you look at the data from the CDC, we are using United States data because United States has better census data and better CDC data than other countries. And it has a pretty large population at 330 million, so we can really see the percentages. Chlamydia is the most commonly reported STD or STI, right? Sexually transmitted infection or sexually transmitted disease. So 1.8 million cases reported in 2019. Now, if you divide that by the total population, it's less than 0.4%. Even if you assume that people underreport, right? Some people have it, they don't report it. Let's assume 1%. That's still one out of 100 people. Gonorrhea is even less than that. It's at 600,000 reported cases, and then syphilis is at 130,000, even less so. The cure? Well, Chlamydia can be cured with antibiotics, as can gonorrhea, as can syphilis, okay? Now, I have personally taken azithromycin for acne, and I remember asking my doctor for it because I thought I had an STD. And so what I did was, I think he gave me, again, I'm not, I'm not a medical professional, okay? This is just my personal opinion. I took azithromycin at 200 milligrams for seven days, and then I took penicillin I forget the dosage. Because I was so scared of STDs at that time, I thought, well, these two things should get rid of all the curable STDs. For azithromycin, actually cleared up my acne as well while I was on the, on that medication. The good news is if you have one of these curable STDs, it's pretty simple. You take an antibiotic, stay on the course for seven days, drink lots of water, take it, you know, usually after you eat, and you're good. If you leave it untreated, you know, symptoms do show up. I have not personally heard of a case where people had really bad symptoms and it was untreated, okay? Now let's talk about the incurables. Hep B and Hep C, okay? I actually didn't pay that much attention to these. Reason being, Hep C is blood to blood transmission and Hep B, about 800,000 people are living with chronic Hep B infection. For Hep C, that's 2.4 million with chronic Hep C infection. Now again, the likelihood of catching it depends on sexual activity, number of sexual partners, the viral load, whether you use protection or not. The risk of transmission can be as high as 30% for sexual partners of people with acute Hep B. That means it's already evolved and developed to be in a very serious stage. However, it can be significantly reduced through vaccination and the use of condoms. Most people these days, you know, when they were going through childhood have been vaccinated already. And then Hep C is, is pretty rare, right? Unless you're sharing needles, it's very unlikely. So during my uh, single days, I never really worried about Hep B or C. It, it wasn't something that I was overly concerned with or thought about at all. Now, here are some STDs that you should be aware of uh, if you're single. HPV. The human papilloma, how do you say this? Papilloma virus, papilloma, papilloma, papilloma. Papilloma virus. 
papillomavirus. HPV, okay? It's a very common STD. Approximately 80%, according to the CDC, of sexually active people will contract HPV at some point in their lives. Okay. What this means is if you're sexually active, at some point you're probably going to have some contact with HPV. Now the key here is that there are many different strains of HPV. Last I read, they discovered over 200 different strains. And I believe 6 to 11 of those strains okay, uh, can cause cervical cancer. The good news is there's a vaccine for some of the most serious HPVs. Okay, There's Gardasil and there's another brand in the US. And basically most teenagers these days, they get one injection, they wait two weeks, they get another injection, and there's three injections to make sure that you're vaccinated. Now you can't really predict what type of HPV you're going to catch, right? Is it going to be the high strain one, the, the low risk one, or the ones that cause cervical cancer? But just know that of the 200 strains, right, I think 6 to 11 of them are the high risk ones. In most cases, when you do catch HPV, it will go away on its own without causing any health problems. I've had friends tell me that after a couple of years, it just went away. The body's immune system developed immunity towards it and it just kind of went away. This is especially true for low risk strains of HPV that cause genital warts, which may resolve on their own or with treatment. High risk strains of HPV can lead to cancer in some cases. So. For women, right, it's important if you get a pap smear test, it can detect uh, whether or not you have abnormal cells growing in that part of the body and if it could potentially be cancerous. So here's the reality, right? Even if you're older, uh, get vaccinated, get those vaccination shots. When you're sexually active, look out for those bumps, right? They look like little brown cauliflowers, okay? You can look them up on Google Images. For women, get regular tests. For men, there's no test to show it other than physical symptoms. Use a condom, obviously, but even with a condom on, there, if you have skin-to-skin -skin contact, you could potentially catch it. And most sexually active adults have caught some form of HPV by the age 40. In fact, one study published in the Journal of Infectious Diseases found that among sexually active women, 18 to 25, 44%, whoa, tested positive for at least one type of HPV. That's almost half by the time they're 25. And then the percentage of women with HPV increased with age with approximately 60% by 29. Holy moly, that is wild. Another study published uh, found that sexually active men, 45% under 26 and then 35%. Interesting, the percentage of men with HPV decreased with age with approximately 35% of men, 28 to 32, testing positive. That's interesting. The thing for me that I learned was, because I, I was very good at and I enjoyed going down on girls. And then after Michael Douglas came out, he said that he got throat cancer from going down on his wife, Catherine Zeta-Jones. That's when I kind of stopped going down on girls. I would always ask them, do you have any STDs? And even if they say no, I look out for bumps and see if there's anything, you know, down there. And I don't go down on girls anymore. Back when I was actively in my active single life, unless I would trusted them or we kind of hung out for a while. There's more of a connection. I think communication is key here. One thing I always do is I, I say, do you have any STDs? Do you have any incurable STDs that you would like to tell me about? And the key here is just to stay silent and just see what she says. And when I was younger, I was just so eager to get sex, so I wouldn't even talk about this. But as I got more knowledge, I realized that it's okay to ask these questions and just to wait and see what they say. Don't be afraid to lose the girl. Be afraid to catch something. The reality is HPV is prevalent. Uh, if you catch it, it's not that big of a deal. It's good to be aware of it. It's good to prevent it. Get vaccinated, ask, communicate, be aware of it, and go on with your life, okay? Herpes 1. Okay, so I had a roommate once and he told me he had herpes 1 and I just freaked out. And then he was like, most people have it. I'm like, what are you talking about? And then I looked it up online and I was like, oh, I see. Are you stupid or something? So herpes 1, if you ever had a cold sore, on your lip, you have herpes. In fact, according to the World Health Organization, half of the people in the world have herpes 1. Now, I've looked into this, can you get herpes 1 through your genital? Yes, you can, but the studies were unclear. It wasn't clear, some studies said that it's not as serious as herpes 2 genital. Some studies say that it doesn't even show up, but it wasn't clear. But the point is, herpes 1 is very common. Most people get cold sores and it's not that big of a deal. It can be a big deal if it's genital, but the studies are, as far as my reading of it goes, is pretty unclear whether or not it's serious or not. What you should be afraid of is herpes simplex 2. Herpes 2, even on your mouth, right? When it breaks out, it's embarrassing. Uh, it's very visible. I remember seeing it on a girl once, uh, talking to her, and I was like, wow, that's, it's kind of like a social value stigma, right? It's like, 
there. And then if it's genital, I've heard that it's very painful. Um, there's blisters. I have had friends tell me, some, some of them say it's not a big deal if you just take medication. Other people say, you know, it really affects their mood and they're down about it. I think it depends on the person. Yeah, genital herpes, from what I know, is not fun. It can be painful. And even with medication, sometimes you still flare up. Now, how common is this? Well, according to the CDC, in the United States, okay, it is estimated that around 12% of all people aged 14 to 45 have herpes simplex too. Dave Chappelle did a comedy skit. He was like, well, one in five people have it. So, but if you take the 12%, it's more like one in eight, okay? But I just assume that one in five girls have it uh, just to be safe. Like I wanna, I wanna protect myself. Now, from my understanding, it's not that big of a deal in terms of your health. It's like you take medicine, it flares up once in a while. Some people, once they start taking the suppression medication, it doesn't even flare up at all. Friend told me that it's not a big deal. Some people flare up more than others. It's treatable. And there's minor changes to your quality of life. However, it is a massive hit to your social value. In the United States, depending on the, some states, right? There's laws that, you, that require you to disclose herpes and HIV. Not only that, if you date someone with herpes, you have to kind of take the risk, right? If, if you catch it, then if that relationship doesn't work out, now you have it and then just like it's a social value hit more so than it is a health hit right in terms of health maintenance it's not that big of a deal but i think in terms of social value hit it, it can be a big deal so it just depends how you manage it i prefer you don't catch it so just good to know 12 percent of people have it it can be transmitted asymptomatically and through skin to skin contact i will talk more about that in a second it's not life-changing, but it's annoying, okay? Prevention is key, communication is key. Sometimes I straight up ask the girl, do you have herpes? Or do you have herpes, HIV, or HPV? Or I ask, do you have any incurable diseases that you have to disclose? And I just shut the f up, right? Literally just stay silent and I wait. And I know that this puts a little bit of pressure on her, but I'd rather be safe <laughs> than, you know, risk her getting mad at me and not getting laid, okay? Because I know I can get laid again, but catching an STD, that's a one-time thing, especially if it's incurable. Now, HIV. Okay, so I used to be really scared of HIV because of all the commercials in the 90s as a 90s kid uh, growing up. Now look, HIV is a serious health issue. With the drugs that are available now, you look at Magic Johnson, he's fine, but it is basically life-altering, okay? Now the good news is in North America, only 1.2 million people report having HIV. And 69%, almost 70% of all new diagnoses come from a small fraction of gay and bisexual men. Even if you multiply that 1.2 million number by three, let's say three million, that's still 1% of the population. And let's assume that half of that is with gay men and bisexual men. It's pretty unlikely. And the transmission rates are very, very low. If you look at transmission rates from someone, unprotected sex, chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis, very, very high. HPV, we know that 80% of sexually active people will contract at least one during their lifetime. Herpes, 10 to 20%, okay, unprotected sex. Now, the transmission risk for unprotected vaginal intercourse for HIV is 0.1 to 0.2%. The only way to really catch it as a guy is if you have a female partner who has it and you're continually having unprotected sex with her, okay? To avoid it, the best thing to do is to get tested before you get into a relationship, before you stop using condoms. The fear of HIV is worse than the reality, okay? It is life-changing, I acknowledge that, but it's pretty rare. Now, people see this and it's like, they freak out, right? Estimated new number of cases, this is from 2018. HPV, very, very common. Herpes, relatively common. Chlamydia, gonorrhea, HIV, it just goes down the list, it's just much lower, okay? It's a low incident rate. There was a study done um, measuring couples with HPV. They found that transmission rates from the penis to the cervix was 4.9 out of 100 the rate from couples with HPV. That's substantially lower from the cervix to the penis. Okay, so cervix to penis more likely 17.4% out of 100 persons. Another study conducted examined the rates of genital herpes transmission in heterosexual couples when only one partner was infected. Okay, over one year, the virus was transmitted to other partners in 10% of the couples, only one out of 10. I'm pretty sure that the herpes person was taking um, suppression medication. So one out of 10. Okay. Now studies have shown that asymptomatic shedding, that means that there's no symptoms, you know, it looks like the skin is clear. It occurs between one to 3% of the time with patients with 
herpes simplex too. Life has risks. If you're sexually active for a couple of years, right, you'll probably run into an HPV scare at some point. Herpes is a thing to watch out for because it has a social value hit. But most people have been honest, at least with me, especially when I ask about it. Okay, don't be afraid to ask, right? This is your life. You have one life to live. You know, if you risk losing the girl, so be it, right? Like, it's okay, but ask. Now besides like HPV and herpes, you have HIV, which is very rare. All the other ones are either really rare, like Hep B and Hep C, or it's curable, okay? When you see charts like this, people think like, oh my God, I'm gonna never have enjoy sex, right? It's like, okay, well, masturbation. Basically, masturbation is 100% safe, okay? But you're gonna be alone. Now, can you masturbate with your partner? Yeah, you can, but it's not as much fun. Hand job, great. Yes, you could catch HPV, herpes, and syphilis through your hands, but it's very unlikely, okay? You can always lend a hand or borrow a hand. Just wash your hands afterwards. Should be fine. Fingering. Again, should be fine. Just wash your hands afterwards. Don't put your hand, you know, right into your mouth or go eat without washing your hands. Now, genital genital contact, that's where, you know, a lot of things can happen, right? Share When you share body fluids, that's when you can catch a lot of things, okay? So keep this in mind. That being said, if you look at the reported rates by ethnicity, interestingly, at least in America, Asians have the least prevalence of chlamydia. The same applies to HSV2 okay, the prevalence between different races, all right? So what does this tell us? Well, at least in the States, as people age, obviously, naturally, the prevalence goes up as they have more partners, okay? So the data suggests that if you pick young Asian slash white girls, they have the least risk, okay? Looking at data from, from most of the STD studies, there's always exceptions to the rule, okay? From my personal experience, if you go out to the club scene and you're talking to like these club girls that are just like pretty heavy on the party side, I have found that this is an exception to the rule, okay? But if you're on the college campus and you're meeting some nice girls, you should be fine. Let me share some stories with you that will help you kind of decide your risk tolerance. Okay, so what is your list risk tolerance? I have friends that I've met that are mostly Americans and they're just raw dogging it and they're just like, oh, they actually take pride in the like, yeah, I raw dog it, I, you know, I got no disease, I'm good. <laughs> I'm just like, bro, you're crazy, man, that's insane. Then you got like my, I have my virgin, you know, uh, nerdy friends in college and they're just like, STD? I wish I had a chance to catch an STD. <laughs> I'm not even getting laid right now. Then you have, you know, my Christian friends who are abstinent until marriage. But then the problem is, you know, the person that they marry, have they been the same? I have friends who do blood jobs only. I have friends who do hand jobs only. I have friends who are just like, you know, I'm going to use the condom and, you know, that's it. Now, look, the one thing I suggest is don't be that guy, right? The raw dog guy, okay? So picture of a hot dog here. Raw dogging it is just a bad strategy, okay? Sooner or later, you're going to catch something. Look, I know condoms don't feel good, but you can find good condoms, right? Like, think about it. It's like a few seconds of orgasm pleasure versus a lifetime of dealing with the incurable disease. And for those of you that are looking for good condoms, I suggest um, I use a condom. You can get this on Amazon called Crown. There's also a Japanese brand condom called Love that for me felt the best. They were the, they felt very thin and it felt the closest to having sex without a condom. Now, look, I'm not gonna refer to any specific client or friend, right? But let's just imagine, this, these are imaginary, okay? But let's say guy number one, this is a player in his 20s, okay? His idea is whatevs, but okay, yeah, sure. You know, he, he's aware, but he doesn't care that much, right? So he uses condoms, but I know a lot of guys who do this in game. They're like, if the girl's really hot, they have this like weird mentality thing where they're like, if she's really hot, I worked so hard to get her or she's really hot so she's probably not getting laid a lot or like she's picky so if she's really hot i want to feel the whole thing so i'm not gonna wear a condom her hotness level has nothing to do with how sexually deviant she is okay there's no correlation whatsoever oh or sometimes um these guys would be like oh i really like this girl i'm just gonna hit it raw okay so one out of ten times or maybe two out of ten times they won't wear a condom sometimes uh, players are like ah, oh, friends with benefits you know let's just you and i we don't use condoms but with everybody else we use condoms so it's the player in his 20s kind of like I, I kind of care but I'm careful but not really right so it's like eh now guy number two he's like okay I want to enjoy sex but I, I don't want to catch an STD so I'll use my hands I can borrow her hand I'm okay with getting a blow because it's very very rare that, you know transmission rates I'm okay with that level of risk I don't want to do any penetration I don't want to risk that I don't want no a no raw dogging you know no penetrating no fluid exchange right so this is a guy who's kind of 
relatively safe until he finds, you know, a future girlfriend who could be a potential partner. Guy number three, the wrap it up and have fun guy. Okay, this is a guy who, you know, he uses a condom, but blowjobs, he doesn't use a condom because he can't feel anything. He doesn't think too much about it. And he gets tested, you know, yearly. You know, he's the fun guy in college. He's responsible, but he just like, I'll wear a condom and that's it. He doesn't think too much about it. Okay, now what would I do if I was uh, advising myself, my younger self? Okay, if I had to start over at 18, I would say, first of all, learn game so you have options, right? And once you have options, you're not so eager to just hang on and not let go to every opportunity that comes along. And you're not afraid anymore. You can just be like, hey, do you have any incurable STDs? And if you do, I don't care how hot you are. I know how to get the next girl, right? So you teach a man how to fish. He eats for, for life, okay? Um, get vaccinated as soon as possible. Okay, your parents should have vaccinated you for hep B. And then HPV vaccinations, you can do that on your own. Always, always ask, do you have any STDs? Do you have any incurable STDs that you should tell me about? And the key here is to pause and stay silent until she says something. Be willing to walk away. That's always attractive and it's always good for your self-protection. Sometimes people don't know they have an STD. So I always look for sores and any kind of like weird blisters or skin abnormalities and just, just to be safe, okay? And I always wear a condom unless it's my girlfriend or that we've both been tested and we are now in a relationship. Stay prepared, okay? I always have condoms in my bag that I travel with, in my car glove compartment in your travel bag, right? You always want to be prepared. You don't want to be in a situation where you have to go buy condoms or in the heat of the moment, you're just like, ah, oh, I don't have a condom, ah, oh, but I'm really horny, right? It's hard to make decisions then. So always be prepared. And last but not least, like once you know what your risk tolerance is, just have fun, you know, don't, don't be so paranoid all the time. You know, kind of like a hypochondriac, you're always thinking what could go wrong. Life is not fun that way. All right, pro tips. Okay, these are pro tips. Uh, disclaimer, I'm not a medical professional, but these are things that I have learned that not many people know about. Carrageenan or carrageenan is a carrageenan. So there has been studies done. It's a form of seaweed and there's, you can get it on Amazon. The carrageenan gel, right? The studies have shown that it is actually an inhibitor of HPV and HSV herpes virus. So what I did was I bought a can of carrageenan gel and you can't really carry it around because it looks like this. It's weird if you just pop it up and start applying it, you know, around your genital area. But if you're at home and she's at your house, you could do that, right? And what it does is it, it actually protects you against skin to skin contact. The part of the where the condom doesn't protect, the studies have suggested that it actually inhibits the attachment factor of those cells. So I used to have a can of this um, in my apartment and I would you know, put it on in the bathroom just to be safer. Another pro tip, false positives can happen. Sometimes technicians, they get the test results wrong, they read it wrong, they conduct the test incorrectly. Studies have shown that in false positives of, you know, the curable STDs, there was about 5%. So if you're getting positive results, but you don't see a symptom, get tested again with a different doctor and people make mistakes, professionals, experts, medical experts, they make mistakes. Especially when you're, when you don't have any symptoms. Right? It's like kind of weird. Why is the test coming back this way? Now you could die crossing the streets. You could die getting hit by lightning in a car accident, right? The key here is to determine what is the data telling me? What is my risk tolerance? Make an informed decision, right? And stick to those rules and then just live your life. But if you don't have a guideline, if you don't have rules to stick to, then every time it's like, oh, maybe I'll do this, maybe I'll do this. And there's no consistency. And that's when you get into trouble. I want you to be safe. I want you to enjoy your love life. I also want you to make your own decision as far as what you are willing to, what type of risk you're okay living with. And that's your decision to make. Hopefully my job today, hope, I hope I did it okay. I hope I gave you some actual clinical data and I've told you some stories of my own and my own experiences, you know, being single, dating. And my hope to you is that you can just live your life, right? Make a decision, have a guideline of acceptable risks you're willing to tolerate, and then go out there and live your life. Overall, my personal opinion is that STDs, instead of it being something that we're afraid of, it should be something that you educate yourself on. It should be something that you're aware of, but not something to obsess over. Determine your risk tolerance, and then don't dwell on it and, and just kind of move on and live your life, right? Once you set your guidelines, you can really have fun with it. And if you're right now, you're struggling to just even get dates or even get sexual opportunities, you may want to check out my course, First Date Formula. You can go to this link here 
It's also in the description. I show you my step-by-step -step instructions on how to get dates through online dating, through cold approaching, through building a social circle. To create this consistent system of two to three hot dates every week with girls that you actually are excited about, that you find attractive. And then from there, you can make your decision. Do I want to stay safe and just use my hands? Use her hands? Do I want to just use protection and be aware of my risks? Do I want to find a girlfriend so I, I feel less lonely and I can enjoy sex? Whatever it is, once you have options, then the game becomes fun. Then you get to play. Right. Check out the links below for the resources to do that. I hope this was a useful video. Take care, stay healthy, enjoy, and I'll see you in the next one.